Hello, and welcome. My name is James. Today, I am extremely proud, and it is with great pleasure to bring you an inner conviction. This is a fantastic lecture about manifestation. Wow! That was quick. Take a deep breath, sit back, relax and let it absorb. Let's get started. Neville Goddard March 15, 1968 An Inner Conviction I tell you that imagination creates reality and I ask you to imagine a state, any state, which would imply the fulfillment of your desire. It doesn't really matter what anyone else thinks, it's what you think that matters to you. If you create a scene which implies the fulfillment of your desire and dwell in it until you have an inner conviction that it is real, what does it matter what another thinks? In the book of Habakkuk, which means to embrace, the prophet speaks to the Lord as, Thou who art of purer eyes than to behold evil. Then he asks the question, Why are you silent when the wicked swallows up the righteous? I will take my stand upon the watchtower, to see and hear what people say to me, and what I will answer. Now the Lord speaks, saying, Write the vision plain upon the tablets, so that he who runs may read it. For the vision has its own appointed hour, it ripens and it will flower. If it be long, then wait, for it is sure and it will not be late. There are those who try to rush everything into being. They try to force birth from conception, but it cannot be done. There are many experiences not recorded in scripture, and I am not here to stand in judgment of anyone as to whether they have experienced scripture or not. But I do know from experience that on this level, if you dare to assume you are what you want to be, your inner conviction, your feeling of certainty will bring it to pass. When you embrace the desired state, you have assumed its impregnation, and its fulfillment has its own appointed hour. It will ripen and flower. If the state is slow in objectifying itself, wait, for it is sure and will not be late. I know that when I was told I could not get out of the island of Barbados for at least six months and I desired to leave immediately, I assumed I was walking up the gangplank of the ship. I felt the dampness of the rail and tasted the salt air of the sea with the feeling of certainty that I was leaving for America. I made that gangplank so real that I hadn't even broken the spell before the phone rang and I was offered passage for the following week. Although I had been told that I was on the bottom of a list of over 2,000 names, my family and I were singled out to board that ship. So I know that the truth of any concept is known by the feeling of a certainty, a peculiar knowingness that it is true. You can take this same concept into all levels of your being, for any desire is a concept. You can move into any desire and express it. Ask no one if you are entitled to it or if you did it only you know what you did. It happened to you. Now wait for the vision, the desire's fulfillment, for it has its own appointed hour. It ripens, it will flower. If it seems long then wait, for it is sure and it will not be late. Returning to the overall picture of God's rising in man, let us go back to the book of Exodus, where we are told, the time that the people of Israel dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And at the end of 430 years, on that very day all the hosts of the Lord departed from Egypt. It was a night of watching by the Lord. 
Then Moses is told to keep this night in memory. Scripture teaches a mystery. Great indeed is the mystery of our religion. The word mystery is defined as a religious truth revealed by God that man cannot by reason alone discover. Here is a doctrine of revealed truth. We are told in the 15th chapter of Genesis, Genesis that you and your descendants will be enslaved for 400 years. Now, the number 400 is the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet whose symbol is the cross. Your body, of beliefs, is the cross referred to as 400, and as long as you wear it you are enslaved in a land that is not yours. But in the end you will be brought out with great possessions. In the twelfth chapter of Exodus, thirty years has been added to the 400, and in the New Testament it is said that Jesus began his ministry when he was about thirty years of age. In this world you are enslaved, and here you remain playing your part until you are embraced, impregnated, and thirty years later Christ is born in you and your trials and tribulations are over. So 400 does not mean years, but 30 does. 400 records the length which Blake calls 6,000 or 8,500 years. Call it what you will, it is the period of time man plays his part in this world. Then comes the moment when, as man, you are selected, called, and embraced, and told to stand upon your watch, for the sign has its own appointed time to ripen and to flower, and that time is thirty years. My friend, Benny, does not remember the embrace, but I remember it well. It was in 1929. I was fully aware of the embrace, just as I was fully aware of its fulfillment in 1959, so I can tell anyone from my own experience how it happens, but I can't tell you when if you cannot remember the embrace. Only after impregnation can I prophesy as to what, and when these things will come into being. But I do know that God's law reflects all the way down to this world of Caesar. I do not know how long it takes for each egg to hatch in a nest, but I do know each one will hatch in its own time. And so it is with an assumption. If I desire to be wealthy, I may not know how long it will take me to reach the conviction that I possess great wealth, but when I feel wealth is mine I have conceived. Con conception is my end. The length of time between my desire and its conception depends entirely upon my inner conviction that it is done. A horse takes 12 months, a cow 9 months, a chicken 21 days, so there are intervals of time, but it comes down to the simple fact that the truth concerning every concept is known by the feeling of its certainty. When you know it, not a thing can disturb your knowingness. In my own case, as I felt the gangplank under my feet and the salt mist on the rail of the ship in Barbados, the phone rang and passage was mine. There have been other times when it has taken longer. Unfortunately we do not keep an account to see how long it takes to come about after we have done it. But a concept is an egg and remains so until occupied. Occupy your desire. Feel its certainty and you can prophesy its fulfillment. Although I did not know what would become of it, I kept a record of what happened to me in 1929, so when I was born from above and raised from within myself in 1959, I looked back to discover that it was thirty years. I discovered that Jesus began his ministry when he was thirty years of age, and that Israel made their exodus thirty years after the four hundred recorded in Genesis. We are going to celebrate this exodus in the immediate future as the Passover, a day to keep in memory forever. For this is a night of watching by the Lord. 
On this day the Lord will bring the entire host of Israel out of the land of Egypt and they will come out one by one. So if someone tells me a story that is not part of my experience, I cannot confirm it or deny it, I only know that my experience is parallel scripture. But I say to you, everything has its own appointed time. It ripens and will flower. If fulfillment seems long, wait, for it is sure and will not be late. Everything comes on time, but we do not know the time interval because we do not record the conception. In my case, I keep a diary. I check scripture to find out where the passage is that I have experienced and record the date beside it. Now I know the length of time it takes to fulfill scripture. I also know that when it comes to the world of Caesar, I have received confirmation while in the silence. I have exploded right into the now and, having felt the thrill I knew it had to happen, but I did not know when. It could be a day, a week, or a month. Three weeks ago I heard good news for a friend, and today I received confirmation that it was completed. I will not catalog that event to say that particular desire equals all desires, because a desire can be as different as a chicken's egg is from the egg of an elephant. I do know, however that events of scripture do have definite time periods. Scripture fulfills itself in God's time, and you cannot delay it or hasten its coming. A friend wrote me this week, saying, I found myself sitting at a table looking at a beautiful plate containing a raw steak, when I heard the words, eat it. Obeying the command I then heard voice say, you have eaten the body of God. This lady has fulfilled the 51st to 56th verses of the 6th chapter of the book of John, my flesh is the bread of life. He who eats thereof has eternal life. She has completely eaten the body of revealed truth and eternal life is now hers. I cannot tell her when she will be called, but she has accepted the revealed truth, which is the body of God. Another letter came, telling of how this lady spent the day working on her husband's books. She was so very tired that as she fell asleep, she said, Father, I cannot take every aspect of the day and change it, but I can imagine that it never happened. So she began to create a scene which would imply that all the problems of the day were resolved, when out of the nowhere, nowhere she saw an enormous scene of mountains clothed with magnificent trees. As she watched, she discovered that her mental activity caused the trees to move and that the world pictured on the outside adjusted itself to be in harmony with her thoughts. Then she said I came to the conclusion that my God is a God of action, for I saw everything I was imagining taking place now. I feel as though the world is moving in me like being on parade. That's how God sees man. We are forever adjusting to his perfect being. He is looking out, yet everything is taking place within. Tonight I ask you to take the most fantastic thing in this world and find an inner conviction within yourself that it is yours, for the truth of any concept is known by the feeling of certainty which that conviction inspires. Once you have that inner feeling of certainty, don't ask me to confirm it. What would it matter what I think? Do not be disillusioned if your experience has not been mine. Believe in yourself and trust your inner feeling. Test yourself and if it works on this level it will work in the depths of your being. If, in my imagination I climb a gangplank, and as I look with nostalgia at the little island of Barbados and the phone rings, offering me the passage I desire, am I not influencing my outer world?
Was the phone call not reflecting my mental activity? I arrived at the point of feeling a peculiar certainty, and that certainty was its inspiration. You can always tell the truth of any concept by the feeling of certainty which it inspires. When you imagine seeing the world as you desire it to be and are inspired as to its truth, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. I don't care what it is, when you know what you want, you can make your desire so real, so natural that you will reach a feeling of certainty which no power in the world can stop. When that feeling is yours, drop it. Don't ask anyone if what you did was right or wrong, you did it and that's all that is necessary. Now let me share the letter I received from Benny. He said, friends of mine, Negroes, a man and his wife, invited me to a party. On the way we stopped at their home, where a group of Caucasians in their teens were having a party. Suddenly my friends appeared in the doorway, coat and hat in hand, and said, you stay and mind the children. I was shocked, but turned to look at the boys and girls, when out of the nowhere a blonde, blue-eyed, fair-skinned lad came toward me, and as I looked at him, I knew he was David. He looked me in the eye and said, I know that our father will never leave us. At that moment I knew my son David, yet I also knew I fathered them all. This was on Wednesday. The following Friday as I told this experience to my friends, I awoke to discover that I had been dreaming, for I awoke on my bed. Here is the doubling of a dream. The confirmation is told us in the 41st chapter of Genesis. Now, you cannot violate the story of scripture. David is described in the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel, and you will not change this description no matter who you are. The Christ child is not described, for he can be black, pink, white, or yellow. There is no description of Jesus either, but I will tell you who he is. He is the Ancient of Days as described in the books of Daniel and Revelation. When you see David, he is the youth of the Ancient One he observes. Benny is now wearing a very dark skin, but in the eyes of his fair-skinned, blonde and blue-eyed son David, Benny is the Ancient of Days, the Holy One of Israel. The one we recognize and call Benny now knows himself to be the risen Lord. Now I will tell him that on the eighth day of July he will be split in two from top to bottom. I know, for the vision has its own appointed hour, it ripens, it will flower. If it seems long, wait, for it is sure and will not be late. Now the book of Ezekiel begins. In the thirtieth year, the heavens opened, and I saw visions of God. Ezekiel gives you a day and a month, meaning nothing. The important thing is that in the thirtieth year the heavens opened and visions of God were his. And as I looked, behold, a stormy wind. That's exactly what happens. An unearthly wind comes in that thirtieth year, and you are born from above, born anew through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus Christ is God's pattern of salvation buried in you. His death in the most literal sense is your life, and his resurrection is possible only after he impregnates himself. God the sender and man the sent are one. Falling in love with the one he sent, God impregnates him. He plants his seed, which takes thirty years to germinate and is his mission to start. This experience comes to man after he has borne his cross in this wilderness world for thousands of years. In spite of the horrible things that take place in the world, when the individual is called and embraced, 
What does it matter what he has to go through before he awakens? In a short period of only 30 years he will be born into an entirely different age, for during that time he is taken out of this age and placed in that age, the age of the kingdom of heaven. Now, because you know this concept, don't feel that you are better than someone else, you are creative power. Stand upon your tower and watch to see what God will say and how you will answer. Do this by assuming you are the person you want to be and seeing what you would see if your assumption was real. Remain there until you feel its certainty, certainty, until you reach the point of satisfaction, until you are convinced of its truth, and although the world may collapse around you, you will become that which you have assumed you are. In the 21st chapter of the book of John it is said that if all things were told concerning Jesus Christ, the world itself could not contain the books, so do not think that because I have not had your experience, that it is not true, but do not try to force me into accepting it. Believe what you choose and go your way this night. My pattern has followed scripture completely, from the embrace to the descent of the dove, but I am not saying it is the only way. I am saying, however, that you can be the man or woman you want to be, but not by simply wishing. You must make the effort to look at the world mentally and see it reflect your fulfilled desire. And when it does you must remain in that state until you reach the inner conviction that what you are seeing, touching, tasting, smelling, and hearing is true, clothe yourself in the feeling of its reality and explode. Do that and you are pregnant. And what do you do after pregnancy? Nothing. You simply wait for its birth to appear in its own appointed hour. And it will. When you least expect it, your desire will objectify itself in the world for you to enjoy, whether it be health, wealth, or fame. That's how God's law works. Now, to the one who had this experience the other night, I know you are anxious to give it birth right away, but what is 30 years in this fabulous eternity? You were awake when it happened, and you will never lose its memory. Should you depart tonight to find yourself a young lady of 20, you would only be 50 when you brought forth the Christ child. Then you would see the complete pattern fulfill itself in three and a half years and enter a new age, which is the world of eternity. My dear, you are destined to no departure from this world of death and entrance into the world of eternal life as you move from darkness into light. But your reaction was natural. It reminded me of a story I heard in New York City. This young girl came rushing into the subway, and standing in front of a gentleman she said, Would you please let a pregnant lady have your seat? Jumping up, terribly disturbed, the gentleman said, When is the baby expected? And she replied, I don't know, it just happened. But this lady knows it will be 30 years, but what is 30 years when you have been called, you have been selected, you have been chosen. You are one of the elect. Now let us go into the silence. Man. That was good. Again, just imagine your deepest desires fulfilled, then just relax and stew in that feeling. Feel as if it's happening this very moment. In 2006, my son joined the army. He was deployed to Afghanistan. I had not heard from him since he graduated boot camp in July 2006. One day in February, 2007, I had just received a hypnotic MP3 in the mail. 
I started listening to it and doing what it said. It said, think of a time when you felt unconditional love. Immediately, I started thinking about when my son was born. I felt it like it was happening in that moment. That proud feeling I had. Your brain doesn't know if it is happening right now or just a thought. Dr. Joe Dispenza, thank you, Joe. The phone rang. It was my son. He was calling me from Afghanistan. That's halfway around the world. This is so powerful. I am so grateful. None of this would have been possible if it wasn't for some of the people that showed up in my life. I'd like to take a moment and give credit where credit is due. Thank you from my whole heart. Rhonda Byrne, The Secret, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Evolve Your Brain, Plus Heal. The documentary, Jay-Z Knight, Ramtha, The White Book, Greg Brayton, Bruce Lipton, Brian Scott, Reality Revolution, Matt Parr, Thomas Garretts, Kevin Stratford, Jake Duce, Alan, from Smart Video Tactics, Caffeinated Blogger, Terry Dean, Joe Vitale, and so many more. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button, ring the bell, and like this. If you did like it, it will really help. Again, thank you.